see if that works. Welcome back. Yep, the sand can be treacherous, but you know what? It's pretty low risk. If you crash in the sand, it's probably going to be a fairly soft landing. So today it's me, Lance, Lucas, and Garth headed up to Zealand. And we run into Charlie and his dad, and some of the other local guys. Let's go get him. Let's go get him indeed. So who am I going to go get? Well, I'm going to go get Garth. I'm going to chase him down. Lance and Lucas are going to chase me down. And Lance is going to show us how to make a pass. And well, Lucas is going to show us how to find cheater lines to make a pass. So this loop right here is something that we burned in today here in the pit. And we kind of just toured around to see where the lay of the land was and what made sense. And this is what we came up with. We did have to do a little avoidance of some illegal dumpers, which are shitty people. But uh, should have got them on camera. That would have been pretty entertaining to see them pick up their own fucking garbage. Uh, but I digress. Here's a nice lap that we're going to do. And here's the loop we came up with. And subsequent to this, some of the local boys that showed up have been riding the loop quite a bit, I hear. So I'm looking forward to getting back out and see how much they got it burned in, because some of those guys could rail. Oh, and there's Garth, just one out of frame. I'm going to catch up to him, and as I come around this corner, you're going to see Lucas and Lance coming into frame, and they're going to catch up to both of us. Like I said, the pros of riding sand is that it's pretty low risk. If you crash, well, the most you're going to do is fill up your cracks with sand. And um, I guess the downside is it gets everywhere in your bike and it's a lot of maintenance to clean your bike after this. I can't say I rail all the corners, but I do get better at them. And I think this practice session here does come into play. Uh, well, came into play yesterday, which you'll see in a future video. And not too future, but yesterday was the last of the five round series of the Brunswick Dirt Rider Hair Scramble series and it went pretty well. And what I can say is ripping around on this sand track did help with a condition that I had called Sandus Flopius and um, it helped me get a little faster. Alrighty, I've reeled in Garth. Um, I'm going to put a little pressure on him. But as I've said before, I don't normally get to pass people, so I don't know how to pass. Well, I don't know how to pass responsibly. So it's not puff, puff, pass. That would be responsible. Uh, well, I guess that would be twist, twist, pass in a motorbike's context. Um, so I don't know how to pass without wrecking myself or wrecking the other guy. So I just tend to kind of follow them. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to see Lance demonstrate how to capitalize on mistakes that we made or how to squeeze you out of corner and make a pass. Now here comes lesson one from Lance where we make a mistake and I think this is either payback or pre-payback for me roosting him. Now what I will say is I was wearing my goggles. So Bridget, make sure Lance wears his goggles. And here's lesson one alpha which is the Lucas line taking the inside line trying to get a pass, breaking the tape. Well done Lucas. <laughs> That's what you get, too much riding with Ray. And Lance, not quite being satisfied with Big Dog and us once, wants to have another opportunity, so he waves us ahead to keep going. But just up here, I thought I was going to make a pass, but it would have taken a lot more commitment than I was willing to give, and might have caused a wreck, so I had to back off. And similarly with this straight. Now Lance doesn't have the same concerns I have in affecting the pass, so he just kind of rips by here, roosts me again, and throws an elbow at Garth. <laughs> in all seriousness, it's that he can control his bike a bit better, well, a lot better. And if he needs to take an alternate line, he can do that too. So 
that was Lesson 2, and Lesson 2 Alpha is coming up right here with the Lucas line. There she goes. <laughs> In all fairness, Lucas is just trying to rip with Lance and uh, put a little pressure on him. And Lance, by his own admission, said that when Lucas wicked it up and cranked that throttle, it was a bit of a hard chase to catch up to him. So, well done to Lucas. And also a tip of the hat. The reality is is that we're just out having fun. This is not actual racing, so I'm pretty sure Lucas could have stuffed us in a corner and got by if he needed to, uh, as is acceptable in racing, but not so much amongst your friends, uh, especially when they're not great riders and you might put them in a tree. Let's jump to the next thing. And the next thing is going to be meeting Mr. Charlie Morehouse. That's Charlie right there on his 85, and boy does he send her. And if you don't think an 85 is a capable bike, well have I got a story for you. I'm going to save that story though for an upcoming video, and that video is going to be the video of the last hair scramble race that was done on Sunday, where all the intermediate A's were a bit nervous of a 12 year old on an 85. So not this 12 year old, but another 12 year old. I think Charlie's actually 11, not entirely sure. Anyway, Charlie does send her, he's been riding bikes for a little while and he usually shows up at the local motocross track and races there. He did come out Sunday and he did race River Glade and I think that went well. I didn't get a chance to talk to his dad a whole lot after the race about how well Charlie had done, but I think it was a good experience for him and he seemed pretty keen about it. So Charlie's a pretty serious young man and uh, he's a thoughtful kind of rider thinks his way through the problem set, picks a course of action, and just commits to it. Great little jump. It's good to see Charlie standing up in some of those sections in the woods. You just get so much more control. And that's a lesson that I'm still working on, just to force myself to stand. Being a tall guy, it's sometimes a bit uncomfortable for long rides, but it just it, you just have more control over the bike. Now this is something else that gets me. When I get to the top of these hills, and trust me, it looks a lot steeper from the top than it does from this perspective. Um, I used to hesitate. Now I can commit a bit better. But I can only imagine what that looks like from someone who's under 5 feet tall on a bike that's an 85. It must look like a giant slope. So, well done on him for being able to just ride into it. Okay, so that wraps up this video. And as I mentioned, here's some of the local boys that we ran into. Unfortunately, my camera ran out of juice before I got some laps in with them. But we'll catch up to them again. <laughs> 